Hello and good evening. Uh, I'm Brian Seifman from Michigan Studio Urology. Uh, thank you for signing on to our webinar tonight. I'm uh, going to be talking about erectile dysfunction. I appreciate you being here. It's all, I always find it strange being on a webinar because there's no feedback. I can't see you, uh, but I know you can see me. But anyway, uh, we'll go through some slides, hopefully take some questions. And, um, you know, at the end, I'll, you know, be able to answer anything that you may have, or at least try to. Uh, sometimes things get a little bit specific, but at least I can give you some general information. In the chat box is where you can write uh, your questions. And uh, like I said, I'll basically get to most of them uh, at the end or try and at least run through as many as we can. All right, so treatments for erectile dysfunction. So just introduce myself, but basically uh, a little bit more about myself. Uh, I was born and raised in Michigan, went to the University of Michigan, so go blue for undergrad, and hopefully they'll finally win a bowl game. I then uh, went to Wayne State for medical school, did my residency and fellowship at Michigan, uh, and have been with uh, Michigan Studio Urology uh, since 2008. My first uh, five years after finishing fellowship, it was with Preferred Urology, which many of you may know, Dr. Lutz and Relly, uh, who are also part of MIU now. Uh, so I started with them for five years, and then we joined the larger group. So in a lot of what I do is, uh, you know, a lot of cancer stuff, a lot of robotics, kidney stone stuff, and then general urology of which BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy or hyperplasia, uh, and um, erectile dysfunction also falls under just general urology. So I guess some basic definitions. So uh, erectile dysfunction, what is it? Who has it and what causes it? So a general uh, way of thinking about it is that erectile dysfunction is the ongoing inability to achieve or maintain erection uh, firm enough to have sexual intercourse. So how prevalent is it? Very much so. So, and there's different ways of looking at it. So it, one in five men will have a problem at some point with erectile dysfunction in their lifetime. Uh, a lot of people look at the 50-50 rule where uh, more than half of men over the age of 50 will have some degree of erectile dysfunction. And some of that is also measured, you know, minor not as firm as it once was, uh, still able to have intercourse on a reg regular basis, but not always. Um, if you look at the, the next box, approximately 40% of men are affected at the age of 40, and nearly 70% of men are affected at the age of 70. So a lot of people look at whatever decade you're in, that's almost the same percentage of people that will have some erectile dysfunction. And 30 million uh, men are affected by this. So the way that the erection works is it basically has to do with either nerves or blood. So it, it's basically how you want to increase blood flow to the penis, and then that allows you to have the erection. And it's the nerves that usually stimulate the blood vessels to dilate. As the uh, arousal stimulates the nerves, the muscles around the arteries that are in the penis relax, causing more increase in blood flow. When that happens, the arteries get bigger, more blood gets in there, and by doing so, it actually compresses the veins so there's no outflow. And that's what actually gives you uh, an erection. So many causes of erectile dysfunction. Most commonly, you're looking at some kind of vascular disease, uh, diabetes, obesity, and smoking. All those things can affect the blood flow to the penis or the nerve, uh, like in diabetes, people get neuropathy. So you can also get the nerves that are affected. People who have high blood pressure and they have uh, or coronary artery disease, they have decreased blood flow to the heart. They can also get decreased blood flow to the penis. Just smaller blood vessels uh, in the penis, but it can also uh, affect it as well. So other causes could be you know low testosterone, uh, if you've had radiation to the prostate, uh, depression or anxiety, uh, other surgeries, and even some medications, some blood pressure medications can actually cause some erectile dysfunction as well. So if you improve your overall health, a lot of times that can help to reverse or at least improve your ability to get an erection. So diet, nutrition, so eating a healthier diet, 
exercise and losing weight, all those things can have an impact on if you have diabetes, getting better, better blood sugar control, loss of weight can increase your ability to increase blood flow. Exercise stimulates more blood flow. Uh, all these things can help to potentially improve your erections just by doing these basic healthy things that you should probably probably be doing anyway. Um, limiting your alcohol use. Alcohol can act as a depressant and can uh, uh, cause erectile dysfunction as well. Stopping smoking. Smoking affects everything, uh, including cancer risk, uh, as well as uh, blood vessel disease as well. Stress can affect erections. Uh, if you're fatigued, you're tired, uh, that can just have a psychological impact on your ability to get an erection. Uh, and also, you know, getting adequate sleep so you're not fatigued. So some urology issues specifically related to erectile dysfunction, uh, low testosterone. So testosterone can have an impact on your interest in sex. That's what I think it has most uh, specifically can cause, but it can also affect the erection as well. So four in, in 10 men over 45 may have low testosterone. And as men get older, there is something called andropause. Basically, it's similar to menopause, except it's for men. So as the testosterone goes down as you get older, which is not unusual. But to check the testosterone level, it's, it's a simple blood test. It does need to be drawn in the morning uh, because that's when your levels are highest, and that's how we can really get a better assessment if your levels are low or not. Uh, Peyronie's disease, uh, that affects about 9 to 12% of men over the age of 50. Uh, it's oftentimes people are embarrassed to come in because it results in curvature of the penis. Uh, and prostate cancer itself, it's not that prostate cancer causes the erectile dysfunction, but some of the treatments can. So whether that's radiation uh, or surgery can both potentially affect it. So I guess I went into a little bit of detail about testosterone already, but a little bit more. So um, with low testosterone, as I said, it, it can increase with age. Men who are obese, uh, diabetes, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure can all potentially have a lower testosterone level. With obesity, the part of the reason why that can happen is because your body can come, body's fat cells can convert the testosterone to estrogen. And so it can just make your overall testosterone levels lower, which is why losing weight can help. Uh, some signs of low testosterone besides the erection issue, some people can have some fatigue or loss of energy, uh, less muscle strength, uh, loss of hair, increased body fat, hot flashes or sweating. Uh, you can even get some breast enlargement. Not very common that that would happen, though. Uh, and then also sometimes people have an inability to focus, uh, poor concentration, uh, and sometimes just some depressed mood can also be associated with low testosterone. So how do we treat it? Uh, different ways of treating it. There's uh, gels, uh, patches, pellets that can be in, uh, inserted. There's injections, there's nasal sprays, uh, there's pills. Um, all of them can potentially work to raise your testosterone level. Uh, there's risks with uh, all of them. Uh, for the most part, they're very well tolerated. Uh, patches can cause a skin reaction uh, where you can get a rash. Um, the uh, older oral medications had some other side effects. There's a newer one. Part of the problem with the orals is that they're not always covered very well by insurance. Um, so the, the gels that you put on topically every morning are typically the most common thing. Um, injections are common as well, and we can teach you how to do the injection itself. So we're obviously here to check these things and help get you the best treatment uh, or the one that would work best for you. So Peyronie's disease. Uh, Peyronie's disease is a, a condition that causes penile curvature. Uh, either an indentation or loss of length of the erection. And this is typically from a plaque or scar tissue that's formed in the penis. It occurs most commonly in men that are over 50, and it's vastly undertreated due to, you know, people being embarrassed to come in and talk about it. How do you know if you have it? 
pretty much the penis is bending uh, during an erect during an erection. Uh, you can have pain with the erection. Can also cause some uh, erectile dysfunction and loss in the length of the penis. A lot of people have seen the uh, commercial for uh, the bent carrot. Bent carrot is trying to get you to come in to feel comfortable to talk about Peyronie's disease. Um, and so some of the treatments would include, um, there's a traction device, uh, there's medications, there's uh, surgery that could be done. Um, there's uh, creams, there's injections into the plaque. Uh, so there's lots of different treatments where we can improve it. Uh, and in a worst case scenario, you could have a, an implant put in. I don't know if that's necessarily worst case, but you fix the problem because if you put in the uh, uh, device in the implant, then that can fix the erection and it will also uh, straighten out the uh, penis as well. So mentioned also briefly prostate cancer treatment. Uh, erectile dysfunction can potentially occur with any treatment. It doesn't have to, uh, but can. Radiation, uh, whether it's the external beam or it's seeds that you put into the, prost into the prostate, surgery, removal of the prostate, Sometimes we try to spare the nerves in certain situations, uh, and that can allow you to keep your erections. Hormone therapy, which are shots that can slow down the growth of the prostate cancer. Uh, cryotherapy can affect the prostate as well. So it may be a little bit hard to see in this diagram, but you can, there is the, uh, the prostate, and then when we take it out, the uh, nerves run right alongside next to the prostate. So if you're doing surgery and you're a candidate to have a nerve sparing operation, the idea is that we leave these nerves in place, which could potentially allow you to keep your erection. Uh, it may take a little bit of time for it to come back. Everybody's different. And the reason why radiation can affect erections as well is because you can see how close those nerves are. They're right on the caps of the prostate. And a lot of times it's very difficult to uh, stop the radiation right at the edge of the prostate without it making sure you get the whole thing treated, but not involve the nerves. And those nerves are needed uh, for an erection. So most importantly is that most types of erectile dysfunction can be treated. So multiple treatments that uh, we'll go over, pills, vacuum pump, uh, low intensity shockwave, uh, injections and implants. So oral medications. Uh, most people are very familiar with either Viagra or Cialis. They both come as um, generics now and have been for the past several years, Sildenafil and Tadalafil. Uh, they can increase blood flow to the penis. It does require sexual stimulation for it to occur. Uh, it's not like you just take the pill and just give you an erection. You need the sexual stimulation for that to happen. Uh, it can be effective for uh, up to, you know, 85% of men. Uh, and depending on what the underlying cause is, it may or may not um, be as effective. Basically, I usually tell people, you know, it, it's easy to take a pill and it's easy to try. Why not try it? Uh, some of the side effects uh, can cause some headaches, uh, some facial flushing because it's dilating blood vessels. So it can also dilate blood vessels uh, in the face as well. Some nasal congestion. The reason why uh, Viagra got called the little blue pill is because in about 3% of people, it can cause uh, a blue tint to things just while it's working. Prolonged erection with the pills is always on the commercials uh, and they always put it in there, but that's a pretty rare situation. So Sildenafil or Viagra, I usually tell people it works best on an empty stomach. So either an hour before a meal or two hours after. Uh, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes for it to start to work. It gets its peak dose at an hour, uh, and it's in your body for about four hours. Cialis or Tadalafil, uh, does, you do not have to worry about food with it, so you can take it with or without. It usually takes about an hour to start to work, and at two hours, it gets its peak dose. And though, you know, the package insert says it lasts up to 36 hours, really, I would tell you it lasts 24 hours and then the uh, pill really starts to 
wear off after that. The other thing with Tadalafil, it can be taken as a daily. So there is a lower dose that after nine days, it builds up in your system and it's always there. So it can allow for uh, spontaneity. It can also help with prostate issues as well. So a vacuum pump, a vacuum pump uh, it can be effective. Um, a lot of people don't particularly like using the vacuum pump. Um, it still has lack of spontaneity, uh, can cause some penile, penile discomfort. Maybe it doesn't work so great. Uh, and sometimes uh, orgasms can be uh, painful. And the reason why is because the way that this works is it's basically a hollow tube that goes over the penis. And then there's a pump, whether it's hand or manually activated or battery powered, brings blood up into the penis with a vacuum. And then you pay, place an elastic band around the base of the penis to hold the blood in there. Sometimes what happens is that during an orgasm with that band on, it's compressing the urethra, so it can sometimes cause pain. So low intensity shockwave therapy, uh, this can help to restore natural function. Uh, it's a pretty uh, simple procedure to undergo. What we use is, um, I think it might be on the next slide. So get to it in a second. Uh, but some of the benefits are that there's really no real downtime to it. There's no pain. Uh, it could potentially reduce your need for any pills and it could potentially be a longer lasting and in theory might be even a, a permanent solution. So how this works is that um, it's basically a wand, handheld wand that causes low intensity shock wave that goes through the penis and uh, you use it in multiple areas. And the whole idea is that what it does is you will feel like a light tapping as it's doing it. It's not painful. Uh, it's not like high intensity shock wave litho lithotripsy that we use for stones. So, but what this does is as it does it, part of what it's doing is it's breaking up plaque, stimulating new blood vessel growth and can increase the flow uh, in the vessels uh, by doing this. It can work in up to about 60 to 70% of people. Uh, and there are some people that will have long-term results, meaning they can last potentially for a year or two uh, if they're getting success with it. You could repeat it if you need to uh, without any increase in side effects or risk or anything like that. So just because it's on the slide here, uh, and I'll mention it again a little bit later, but we do have a uh, some place called Redeem. It's our sexual health uh, and uh, medical spa, uh, also for aesthetics that we just opened in Birmingham, which basically treats uh, erectile dysfunction with dual lift there, amongst some other things that I'll talk about in a little bit. Another potential treatment is doing uh, injections. Um, about 60% of men can see some success with them. Uh, a lot of times they can cause uh, pain with the erection. Uh, you can get scar tissue, which uh, as you do the injection, uh, you're putting it into the corporal body. Uh, and if you're, you want to rotate and do different spots, so that way you don't get the scarring. If you get scarring, really what you're doing is uh, causing essentially Peyronie's disease uh, in that area, so the curvature. Occasionally, you get a prolonged erection, which is why we make sure we do a test dose so we can see what kind of response that you get. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work either. So here's how it works is that uh, you basically draw up the medication into a syringe. Uh, you do a shot directly into the side of the penis and right in the center there is where we call the corporal bodies are. And that's where the blood vessels get dilated. So you inject the medication. Uh, it usually is effective after about 20 minutes. One of the downsides you have to be concerned about is that over time, the medication will lose its potency. Uh, so you do need to keep it in the refrigerator. Uh, and um, like I said, the limited shelf life is an issue as well. Uh, and usually these are made by a compounding pharmacy. So depending on where you live, uh, Sometimes you have to go through a mail order. Sometimes you have to maybe drive a little further to go and pick it up. And then uh, penile implants, 
Uh, you know, 90% of patients report satisfactory erections with them. Uh, some of the risks with it, you do have, it is a surgical procedure. So usually you stay in the hospital overnight. And that's mainly uh, so that way you can uh, get IV antibiotics just to decrease the infection risk. If it did get infected, uh, then you'd have to remove the device. Uh, and it is a mechanical device. So in theory, it could also just stop working or have to be a, a component of it have to be replaced. So uh, there's really two types of implants. Uh, there's the malleable, which is basically two rods that are placed inside the penis uh, in the corporal cavernosa or those corporal bodies. Uh, and literally you just bend the penis into the desired position. So that way it gets straight when you're not having sexual activity, you essentially just bend it down. And most commonly though, most people use an inflatable. And with the inflatable, uh, you can see in the picture that there's a reservoir that has fluid in it. You put the cylinders into the penis and there's a small pump that goes into the scrotum. And so through the skin, you can actually squeeze the pump. And as you squeeze it, uh, it brings fluid from that reservoir into the cylinder to give you the erection. And then the, when you're done with sexual activity, you can, there's a bump or a, a little knob on the uh, pump itself that will deflate the fluid. They'll put it back in, into the reservoir. So I guess before I get to the uh, question, a couple other things that I did want to mention. Um, so with, uh, this is kind of my, I guess my shameless plug uh, for Redeem. So it, I did talk to you about Duolith already, um, which is a low intensity shockwave therapy that you know can work very well. I wouldn't say that for somebody who has no erections that all of a sudden they're gonna get normal erections, but it certainly can improve your ability to increase blood flow. It can make the pills work better. It can potentially get you off pills. If you're doing shots, we may be able to get you uh, just doing pills instead of shots. And if you, you, you use it when you're just starting to have some erection problems, it could potentially uh, increase your ability to not need any pills and to keep the blood flow flowing through. Dual, by the way, it's six treatments. Uh, they're one week apart. Uh, it takes roughly about 15, 15 to 30 minutes to do. Uh, a couple other things, uh, there's something called the Priapus shot, uh, which is where they take your own body's uh, blood-derived growth factors. So you get a blood draw, they spin it down. You can actually inject it into the, the penis itself. And what that can do is potentially uh, increase the effectiveness of erectile dysfunction medication. It can increase the sensitivity. So some people who are having a lack of sensation uh, with select sexual activity, it could potentially improve sensation. Uh, it can make it easier to get the erection. And for men who have Peyronie's disease, this may also be an option to help to soften the plaque to basically get it to straighten out as well. And then uh, there is also something else called the P-toxin shot, which basically involves injecting Botox uh, into the penis. And the whole idea of this is that um, Botox causes uh, blood vessels to relax and if the blood vessels relax, like the arteries in the penis, it can cause dilation of the blood vessels um, to help you basically get erections as well. So um, to do that, it takes about two weeks uh, after the injection for it to get its uh, full effect. And the goal is that it increases the erection quality. Uh, and in some cases, it may increase penile length. So those are a few things that we do offer at Redeem that are specifically related to erections. Um, and I think that they're all potentially good treatment options for, for the right person. So thank you for your attention so far. So let me try and see if I can run through uh, some of these questions here. So apnea affect erection. So sleep apnea in and of itself, I would not say that it causes erectile dysfunction. However, what sleep apnea does do is it can cause heart arrhythmias. Usually there's obesity, usually there's high blood pressure. And all those things can have a direct impact uh, on the erections. So 
I wouldn't say it's the apnea in and of itself. It's really the other issues that are associated with the sleep apnea that it can cause. Uh, can you use sildenafil with a blood pressure medication? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, the only one that you really cannot use it with is uh, any uh, nitrates. So if you're taking a drug called isosorbide or if you need sub sublingual nitroglycerin, that's the only real contra, uh, contraindication. But if you're taking losartan, metoprolol, you can still use uh, sildenafil or tadalafil with both those pills. Uh, somebody's not interested in sex at all, could that be part of low testosterone? Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I would definitely uh, get your blood, blood checked for your testosterone level. Sometimes the hard thing is that you have no interest in sex, so you don't want to come in, you don't want to get it checked, and it's just a vicious cycle. Um, so if you notice that this is a problem for you, the problem is if you're not interested, maybe you don't think it's a problem. Uh, but I think that it, it is worthwhile to at least get your testosterone level checked. Maybe you're, you have, you're overweight, uh, might give you more energy levels, uh, may improve your mood, uh, may help with um, bone density. So there's lots of reasons why if your testosterone is low, you should try and fix it. Uh, any shock with both the TRIPSI clinical trials that I can join? Uh, frankly, I'm not aware of any trials uh, on the shock with both the TRIPSI. There are, um, there are some uh, studies out there that do show its effectiveness, uh, but I'm not aware of any trial that's being done right now. Uh, are there any downsides? There really are no downsides. Uh, I guess having the appointment, uh, it's a, like I said, it has about a 60 to 70% improvement rate. So I guess the only downside is if you happen to be in that 30% where you don't really notice much improvement, I think that's the biggest downside to it. Uh, creams or ointments possibly on the horizon for, uh, I presume for rectal dysfunction. So, and the only reason why I say that is because there is a cream that's used for Peyronie's disease. Um, so it, there is something for that. I would say it's not great uh, because it doesn't get absorbed that well to actually soften the plaque. Uh, but in terms of for erectile dysfunction, there is um, there's a gel that uh, was used for a little bit or it's, it's, I think, out there or available where you can put a gel into the urethra. There used to be a drug called Muse, which is, I don't even know if it's on the market anymore, just because it didn't have much uh, market share and it had a very high uh, burning erection rate. And that's not in a good way, and that's not a good thing to have uh, prior to sexual activities if you're having pain. So, um, but anyway, the cream uh otherwise, I'm not aware of anything else that um, is coming out anywhere in the time in the near future. Uh, is the shockwave covered by insurance? Uh, it is not covered by insurance. Um, I can't give you a good reason why, except that uh, I just know it's typically not. Um, so yes, it is cash. The um, uh, There's payment plans if you need, I'm sure. Uh, and I'm not aware of the exact cost. So, uh, but that's something certainly that, you know, you could probably get, you know, through an easy question through, for a website or through contacting Redeem. Uh, will a shock treatment help after a prostatectomy? It can. The, the reason why I say it can is because um, with the uh, prostatectomy, if it's a nerve issue, then it may not help. So if it's a blood flow issue, uh, then it potentially can. Uh, how do you sort that out? Um, Nobody likes how you get sorted out because uh, basically you have to do one of the injections and see if there's increased blood flow and see if the blood vessels dilate. That can sometimes help to sort it out. Uh, most people don't want to get an injection uh, you know, to figure this out because that's also typically not covered by insurance because um, the treatments still remain the same anyway. Uh, are any of these recommendations covered under Medicare? Um, I don't know specifically, you know, about Medicare. So, but, uh, it depends on your insurance coverage for like Viagra and Cialis or the generics. Um, 
we do sell both those. Uh, we have a dispensary uh, that's separate from Redeem where we do sell it you know, for a cash price that it's usually um, much less than the cash price you can get through the pharmacy if it's not covered for you. Uh, the uh, testosterone uh, is typically covered by insurance um, in general, so long as uh, some insurances require uh, two blood draws uh, to make sure that your testosterone is low. Uh, the dual that I said was not covered. Uh, the injections for erections um, typically not covered because you usually get that through a compounding pharmacy, uh, but that can be reasonably priced. Uh, the vacuum pump, again, depends on the insurance plan. Not sure if you heard that last one. It looks like maybe I lost you for a second, but uh, vacuum pump uh, can be covered, but depends on, on your individual insurance plan. So the cost, again, another question about covered by insurance. Uh, could old vasectomy be a reason? No, because the vasectomy should not affect your, uh, your testosterone level, uh, blood flow, or anything along those lines. Uh, for the dual, dual lith, are you supposed to take ED pills before the shockwave treatment? No, uh, I don't think that that's going to alter things. Uh, who performs penile implants at Michigan Institute of Urology? Uh, I do not. Uh, uh, Dr. Jason Sandberg uh, does them. Uh, Dr. Valal George, uh, Dr. John Harding, um, Michael Lutz, Jim Rally. Uh, off the top of my head, uh, and those are the people that I usually see and are, are near on the side of town or my side of town. Uh, so depending on where you live, uh, there may be somebody else. If you go to our website, uh, you can look on the individual doctors uh, and it may list on there. If they specialize in erectile dysfunction, they're probably doing the implants. Uh, how does pre-prostate issues have with regards to ED issues? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the question is, but so... Um, I'm guessing about, you know, if you have BPH prostate issues, uh, a lot of men with BPH also can have erectile dysfunction. Um, but I look at them as being two different things and they're treated two different ways. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's exactly your question. If to regard to prostate cancer, uh, again, if you are you're having erectile dysfunction before your prostate cancer treatment, it may be more likely that you'll have more issues after um, if you're asking about BPH uh, issues, that is a different story. I think most of the BPH treatments uh, will not affect, you know, the, um, the erections. Some of the medications like finasteride and uh, dutasteride can affect uh, erections. So I hope I answered something in there for you. Uh, the test for testosterone covered by insurance. Yes, that typically is. Um, that's usually not an issue. Uh, so long as, you know, it's put under the right code. Uh, but yeah, the blood test is usually covered. Uh, does an enlarge prostate mean there's a greater chance of low testosterone lean to ED? No. Uh, just because your prostate is large does not mean that you're more likely to have low testosterone uh, in erection problems. Uh, and how frequently does finasteride cause ED? It's about 7 to 8% of men. Level erection problems with it. All right. And one last question here. So does having diabetes increase the chances of infection as a result of penile implants? It does, but I would still say the risk is pretty low. So as long as your hemoglobin A1C uh, is a reasonable number, um, reasonable, I don't know, 7%, 7.5% or less, then it you should still be okay and your risk of infection won't be very uh, much increased compared to someone without diabetes. If your hemoglobin A1C is nine uh, or 10, then yes, and I would probably tell you I wouldn't do it because you gotta get your diabetes under control first. All right, so I guess in summary here, there's a variety of treatment options. 
uh, talk with your partner, uh, talk with your erectile dysfunction specialist, talk with your urologist, uh, and certainly you know go to our website. Uh, there will also be a link to redeem on there on there as well. And hopefully we can answer any other questions for you uh, in person. Okay, thank you and have a great night and go blue and hopefully they beat Alabama. Thanks, have a good night.